One of the most important reactions in chemistry is called nitrogen fixing. It's where nitrogen in the atmosphere is bonded to hydrogen to form ammonia or NH3. Now the creation of ammonia can be biological or by an industrial means. Without it, human life on Earth would be radically different. Nitrogen is the most abundant gas in the atmosphere, but in the atmosphere it's two nitrogen atoms triple bonded to each other. This bond is extremely strong, so the nitrogen in the air is difficult to use to form chemicals that plants and animals need to survive, which is where the nitrogen fixing comes in. Specialist bacteria present in the soil and also in the roots of some plants, especially beans, the ability to break the nitrogen bonds, then attach the nitrogen to hydrogen, creating ammonia in the process. Bacteria use enzymes like nitrogenase to reduce the nitrogen to ammonia. In an industrial setting, the nitrogen requires to be heated around 400 degrees centigrade and place in a couple of hundred times normal atmospheric pressure. This of course requires vast amounts of machinery and substantial amounts of energy. This industrial process though produces over a million tons of ammonia each day around the world. And while some of the ammonia production goes into the creation of basic explosives and a few other things, the vast majority of ammonia production goes into creating ammonia nitrate fertilizers. Now it's this chemical similarity between fertilizers and explosives, the reason behind the so-called fertilizer bombs. And whilst nitrogen can be added to farmland by bacteria or by lightning strikes, most farmers rely upon adding extra ammonia nitrate fertilizers to boost their crop yields. These are then absorbed by the roots of the plants. Nitrogen is then used in large amounts for cell growth and creating amino acids essential for the healthy plant. The result, the plant which is low in nitrogen will have stunted growth and yellow leaves. However, if the plant actually has way too much nitrogen, it will produce very short roots and virtually all leaves at the expense of things like flowers, fruiting bodies and other useful structures. The other related issue with too many nitrates in the soil, they can then be washed off the land and into relievers, polluting the water supply. However, like many biological processes, as well as bacteria in the soil which fix nitrogen, there are others which release it back into the atmosphere, especially as part of the rotting and decay process of dead plants and animals. It's this cycling of the nitrogen through living organisms that forms part of the nitrogen cycle. Now, before the introduction of industrially produced nitrogen, guano was added as to nitrogen to the soil. The main source of this guano was from the droppings of things like seabirds and bats, where large colonies of the animals would nest or roost, and the area below them would contain such a density of the droppings it could be profitably extracted. However, even before the chemical identification of nitrogen and use of guano, it's recognised that something was needed to keep soil fresh. That's why early farmers used crop rotation, either keeping a field fallow or empty every three years, or by planting beans in the exhausted field. Both methods were effective at adding nitrogen to the soil in a form that plants could actually use. That is why nitrogen is really essential for human life on planet Earth.